In continuation with our series of Guru Purnima, we today have Sir Babaji with us. Welcome, a warm welcome to you, Babaji sir. Uh, viewers, we, uh, we have these regular people on our channel every Guru Purnima and Babaji is going since the first year with me. Let's see what he has today with us. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, madam. Very good to uh, have a chat with you always again. Uh, so it's the auspicious time of Guru Purnima and we know Guru Purnima is uh, very special for uh, each one of us, especially for the students of Jyotish because uh, this, this festival marks uh, the beginning of the relationship uh, between the Guru and the disciple, of course. And uh, as Lord Krishna says uh, in the Bhagavad Gita that Tad Diddi Prani Pate Na Pari Prashne Na Sevaya he says, Upadekshanti te jnanam jnani na stattva darshina. He says that first you uh, render service to a great soul and then, you know, you should inquire uh, humbly, inquire uh, submissively. And the great souls, they have seen the absolute truth. So they can actually, you know, enlighten us. Uh, so therefore, uh, whichever uh, stream we are, uh, whichever religion we are belonging to, whichever community we are, whichever gender we are, whichever age group we are, whichever uh, yeah, whichever parampara we are following within the uh, religious traditions, uh, the importance of a guru or a priest or a guide or a father or you know, even in Islam like the Malvi, uh, it is always stressed because uh, generally people ask. Uh, why do I need a mediator between me and God? <laughs> People say, you know, my, uh, I, I, me and, I mean, me and God are nobody in between, right? <laughs> so I had also asked this to my uh, Shiksha Guru, like almost a decade back, that why do I need a mediator? Or I asked him, why do I need you between me and God? <laughs> So he said, you know, I had asked the same question to my guru, he said. <laughs> oh, correct. Who is your guru, sir? Shiksha guru? Yeah, he's in Chennai. Okay. Yeah. So he said to me that a guru is not one uh, who comes between you and God. <laughs> guru is one who comes to remove that which is between you and God. Correct. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. So many times people think, oh, this guru means, you know, it's like a mediator, right? Uh, no, not exactly. Guru is not a mediator. Guru is like uh, one who connects you to God, right? So you can say he's a mediator or whatever. That terminology depends on your consciousness. But a guru tries his best to engage uh, the disciples' uh, natural abilities in spiritual life. The natural abilities, the natural talents, right? So, for example, if a person uh, likes to uh, sing, for example, so then how does he uh, take to spiritual life? So, he may sing bhajans which, uh, through which he can connect to God. Somebody likes to cook, for example. Somebody is a very big chef in a five-star hotel. So, then what does he do, right? So, he can actually... Yeah, yes, he can make bhoga and then we offer it and then that's the prasad which everybody accepts, right? Okay. And somebody likes to write, you know, they can write uh, articles on spirituality, on God, you know, and so many things you can do, right? Yes. So somebody likes to read, they can read the scripture. Somebody likes to teach, they can teach the scriptures. Somebody likes to go for trekking, they like adventure. So there are so many holy places where we can like visit, right? So the Guru's main job is to uh, see the disciples' inherent nature and try to give some engagements by which uh, he or she can feel uh, that it's very easy to connect to God uh, just by the way of being myself. I don't have to become somebody else. I can just be myself and I can connect to God. So therefore, uh, it's very important that uh, in our spiritual life or even in our journey of astrology, <laughs> we always you know, find a guru or a mentor now, of course, in spiritual life, there are different gurus. You know, there's a Pat Pradarshita guru uh, who shows us the way to spirituality. Then there is Shiksha guru who gives uh, us the divine knowledge. And then there is uh, Diksha guru, which uh, who gives us initiation, Diksha into a particular tradition, of course. 
but even if you talk of astrology uh, at least uh, you may not have a diksha guru when it comes to astrology but you should at least have a shiksha guru or a mentor at least right who can actually help you uh, yes kick, kick start kick start or other uh, continue the journey of jyotish because uh, it's very easy to kick start astrology you know you just see some youtube videos and you go to astrosage.com and you like you have the horoscope and all the fancy predictions from the online software, right? Mangal is in seventh house. This is going to happen. Yeah. Jupiter is in seven. This is going to happen, right? But the most challenging part in astrology is not to learn techniques, not to start astrology. It is to continue uh, and add up to your research, right? So, because I see so many people who are very good as, uh, like, they're very good intellectuals, but they do not have a mentor. They lack patience to actually uh, apply the techniques that they learn about predictive astrology, right? So that is where the challenge comes. So today, what I will try uh, to do is like uh, to help everyone identify when are certain periods using astrology, using your horoscope, when you can actually, you know, find, try to find if I can find a guru or a mentor or a spiritual teacher even maybe for astrology also right so for that of course uh, the beginning is uh, you always have to check the overall chart uh, first so when you check the overall chart you will know what is the strength of the chart because uh, people tell me that when will i find my guru and i ask them imagine the guru comes in front of you will you be able to follow what he says and then they are like okay maybe or maybe not right so First, we have to always check the overall chart. What is the situation uh, when it comes to his ascendant? Uh, what is the situation of his son, especially? Then we need to check Jupiter. Yeah. Then, then we need to check the Lord of the Ninth House because the Ninth Lord is the Guru personified. Or the Ninth Lord can show the location where you find the Guru. So, so many things <clears throat> can come up with the Ninth Lord. Then we have the fifth lord. The fifth lord will show our diksha, the mantra diksha that we get initiation in a particular sampradaya. So all these things are important. And then we have the moksha trikons, like right? you know, the fourth house, eighth house, the twelfth house. Why do I say the moksha houses? Because uh, we have the dharma trikons, the one, five, and nine. These three houses, uh, which inherently show our dharma, but unfortunately most of the people do not take to spirituality just like that it's a fact right they they just don't say that oh today i want to do something you know let's go and do it yeah there are some people who may do it but most of the people they undergo some very 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 tough critical challenges in life and they are undergo some radical transformation because of which they end up feeling that now i need some other shelter basically right it's like I need some other hope. So, so the 12th house gives them losses, right? Which is very painful sometimes because it's the loss of the lagna after all. And then the 8th house is like, uh, the 8th house is like a graveyard where you are, you know, shedding tears because you have lost something. And then you have the 4th house. The 4th house tells you how do you take things in life, right? So something good happened. Uh, do you become very egoistic? Do you become puffed up with pride when something good happens or you stay humble right now when something bad happens what do you do do you become very pessimistic do you get into depression or you can still be normal and humble right so uh, people they have very tough times even when they are having good things in life and even when they are having bad things in life so the fourth house will tell you how do you deal with transformation? It can be a positive transformation from the 8th house or a negative transformation, right? How do you deal with losses? How do you deal with letting go of things? Okay. So these are these are not directly spiritual stuff, but uh, they, they help us in a okay. internal way to become more spiritual. Okay. And of course, we have the traditional, the Dharma Trikon, the first house, which is like, you know, the Lagna, it shows the intelligence. And the intelligence doesn't mean you know how you can memorize some certain things it does not mean you can you know speak like a thousand shlokas from the ramayana or mahabharata it doesn't mean that neither neither does it mean 
uh, you can you know uh, prove some theorems of mathematics it's it's not that's not intelligence and that is a part of intelligence of course but intelligence uh, the sanskrit word which is used is uh, dhimahi basically so dhimahi basically means our ability to connect to the divine our ability to connect to god because it is said a person who connects to god is by default very intelligent because he is connecting to the source of everything else right one it is said one who knows god does not have to know anything else because everything is known <laughs> Uh, so therefore, we have to check the first house and then the fifth house and the ninth house, as I said before. And now when you uh, check these houses, it, it will never happen that your Lagna Lord or your fifth Lord or your ninth Lord all are exalted. It will never happen. It will never happen that the fourth Lord is exalted. You, know, you may have one or two of these in exaltation, but some of them will be in debility, some of them will be in a Dustana house, the four, the sixth or the eighth or the twelfth. And some of them may not be in debility, but some of them may not, uh, may be conjunct with malefics, even though they are in the tenth house or the fourth house, seventh house or fifth house or ninth house or any house, they may be conjunct or aspected by malefics, right? So, uh, that's how life is. Everything will never be good. Uh, you will always have some trouble or the other, you know, in some area of life because of the malefics and the lords of the Dustanas, basically. So now, finally, when you look at the overall chart, uh, along with that, we should always check the strength of the sun, as I said, because uh, the sun actually represents the kingdom, as you know, and the sun tells us how do we, uh, what do we identify ourselves with? So, if somebody has sun, which is conjunct the ninth lord, or sun is conjunct Jupiter, or sun is aspected by the ninth lord, or aspected by Jupiter, then the person has a greater probability, again, that's a probability, uh, to identify himself or herself with some spiritual path, right? Okay. Which, uh, which means the person may be an IT engineer, or a politician, or a finance analyst, or whoever, or a sportsman, but the person's main identity in life is uh, I am a servant of my guru. I am a servant of God, right? So like we have the example of Hanumanji, for example, from the Ramayana. So Hanumanji, he's ex extremely intelligent. He's extremely powerful, right? He's known as Ramaduta Atulita Baladhama. He's like extremely powerful. He has all the eight Siddhis and the nine Nidhis. He's uh, supremely empowered by so many different devatas. But if you ask him, and he has another identity, he's son of a particular person, uh, uh, then like son uh, of two of I, parents. So uh, he he may be a friend of somebody, right? He may be uh, he may be something of something, somebody of somebody. <laughs> but if you ask him, who are you? What is your prime identity? Are you this very powerful person who can? Uh, fly uh, to Sri Lanka from uh, maybe you know Dhanushkodi for example or are you the one who can bring the Drongiri Parvat from the Himalayas to Sri Lanka he will say no I am none of these I am just a humble servant of Lord Ram that is his identity so he has so many designations right he has maybe a hundred or a thousand names but if you ask him what do he you say I am Lord Yes, he will say, I am a servant of Ram. That's all. <laughs> so that's the beauty. You know, uh, you have so many designations and you have so many identities, but ultimately the sun is known as Atma. Now, whenever the people who hear the word Atma, they think of something very dangerous. Or, you know, as in a TV serial, sometimes they show that it's the Atma or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> the word Atma actually means the self. Atma means the self. So whatever you think of yourself, that is that itself is the Atma, right? So uh, if you think you are an IT engineer, then you are an IT engineer. <laughs> but if sun is associated like with uh, the ninth house or the ninth lord, then uh, there is a very high chance that the person can identify with a particular guru or with a particular spiritual tradition. And when the dasha of sun gets activated, provided sun is associated or with Jupiter, as I said, then also the person can uh, take into take to some spiritual path, or at least he may be introduced to a particular spiritual path. 
because the sun shows light and sun is also a karaka for the ninth house right along with jupiter so then of course we have uh, the planet jupiter which is you know the nasargic uh, significator of uh, like he's the karaka for the guru himself so does it mean just because if you have a jupiter mahadasha you will just meet your guru you know it, it very rarely happens the that way you know just because you have a guru dasha and you know you meet your guru it generally doesn't happen but uh, what i have seen is uh, in guru dasha if somebody uh, already has very strong indications in his horoscope like the lagna lord is in the ninth house or the ninth lord is in lagna or the fifth and the ninth lords are mutually aspecting each other or they are conjunct and they are sitting somewhere then i have seen even if jupiter is not associated with any of the dharma trikons even then the person meets uh, some spiritual teacher this is very surprising but i have seen this so th this is like saying you know the person um, inherently is very spiritual but uh, the person is looking for a guru and somehow he find, finds the guru basically and and of course apart from that you know your uh, the lord of your ninth house his dasha if it is running that can also help uh, to find a guru and uh, along with that we also need to check the navamsha chart because the navamsha is a very important chart when it comes to your spiritual life so sometimes i have seen if a planet is in the navamsha lagna and that planet's dasha is running even then a person can meet a guru or the lagna lord of the navamsha if that dasha starts even then we might uh, be able to meet uh, our spiritual teacher and take enlightenment and of course within it will not ever happen that you know uh, you are just ninth lords dasha is starting it won't happen like that because uh, for example if you are uh, aries lagna then jupiter is the ninth lord but he is also the 12th lord right <laughs> so then it means that both the houses are getting activated in guru dasha which means you might or maybe you will only meet a teacher when you move to a different state within india because the 12th yes. house is associated or it can show when you move to a different country also right and sometimes uh, the ninth lord can be a malefic like for example we have you know taurus lagna the ninth lord is saturn is a malefic so what does it mean you know malefic but he's also the 10th lord you see so therefore uh, it means that it will happen uh, you will meet, you might meet the guru but it will happen uh, you are traveling for work yes 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 when you are uh, when you are having a good purpose in life only then you are going to meet the guru because if the 10th house is involved it shows you have a very strong purpose in life along with the 9th house so it's like saying uh, the guru is there and the purpose is also there that is why you know whenever prashara says the 9th and 10th lords are linked it's dharma karma dipati yoga so it's like uh it's like saying the guru and the purpose so if you have a guru but you have no purpose what's the use <laughs> and and if you have a purpose but you don't have a guru then how do you go there right so the ninth and the 10th if they are somehow interlinked then one of the planets dasha gets activated either the ninth lord or the 10th lord even then you might meet a spiritual uh, master and uh, you 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 may start of your spiritual journey and because the 10th house is associated you may take it to uh, take to that path very 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 seriously and if the lagna lord is also in 10th it might become a life purpose for you actually so along with that of course uh, within spirituality it depends on you know like there are so many different spiritual paths which you can take even within the vedic context like uh, hinduism if you say uh for example like krishna says in the gita like there is uh, karma yoga then there is you know there is gyan yoga there is dhyan yoga and yoga and then there is bhakti yoga at the end so so if you have very prominent artha houses then it is very probable that you would like to uh, work like a karma yogi and maybe you want to offer the fruits of your uh, actions to god and accept whatever god gives you so that's that is more prominent like if you have uh, too many planets in the second sixth and 10th house then this can happen i have seen in my experience and of course if you have very prominent planets in the moksha houses uh, the fourth eighth or 12th then 
when the dasha activates you may meet a guru who is from a bhakti yoga tradition right so they may teach you like bhakti yoga and basic principles of bhakti yoga or something like that and of course ashtang yoga can come when uh, you have like too many planets in the uh, kama houses you know like which are the airy signs of course like gemini <laughs> or or i mean, it can be the third seventh and eleventh or <laughs> even in the airy signs it can happen with aquarius sometimes also so depending on the nature of the plan and sometimes you know it, it can it is possible that your rahu himself is in the ninth house right so so rahu dasha gets activated so then what happens you may meet a spiritual teacher but the person may be a foreigner for your tradition yes. or or you uh, may take uh, follow some other uh, Yes, 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 yes. So there was this one. Not uh, of your own. Uh, yeah, there was one, one of the funny. Different. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there was one funny client I had. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, he had once consulted me, uh, not for himself, for his son. So he told me, he, he asked me that, you know, I, I'm a very spiritual person, but my, my son, will he become spiritual someday? And he was having Rahu in the ninth house. So then I said, uh, yeah, he will be, but uh, not in ways that you expect him to be. Correct. <laughs> Out of box thinking. Yeah. So uh, then, then after three months, his dasha started. And after six months, his father again called me. <laughs> and he said, you know, my God, what, what is happening? You know, you said he will become very spiritual. But now he's telling, I want to go out from this house only. I said, why? Because he said, you know, I I want to become a father in a church. <laughs> and he's born in a Hindu family, but he's getting inspiration from Christianity. So he's wanting to follow that tradition, right? Which is, which is like perfectly fine, whichever tradition inspires you. And similarly, I have seen in many Westerners, like people in America and like Canada, Australia and all this, whenever they have Rahu or Ketu, associated with the ninth and the 12th both then they always end up coming to india somehow or the other it always happens even if saturn is involved they will still come to mm -hmm. india because saturn and rahu for them can mean very austere situations austere circumstances right so imagine a foreigner who is staying in like you know america mm -hmm. in a nice city like new york you you tell him that he has to come to Haridwar and stay, you know, uh, I mean, it's a great place. It's a great place. I have gone to Haridwar once, but it's a bit austere for somebody who is in America, right? So, yes. And sometimes if Ketu is involved, then I have seen people getting inspired towards uh, Chinese, uh, the Chinese religion, like Confucian religion or Buddhism, or I have... Or I have also seen them getting inspired towards uh, Sikhism sometimes. You know, these are like my observations. And of course, if Mars is involved and Mars is like uh, in your sixth house or it is in the Lagna or it is in the ninth house, then you may be inspired to follow a tradition where there are a lot of yagyas involved, where there are a lot of sacrifices, fire sacrifices, and you might want to keep Brahmacharya, celibacy uh, to uh, follow your spiritual tradition. So, and of course, if moon is involved, I have always seen by default, they are into like singing bhajans and kirtans and they are into bhakti yoga. That's like by default. In fact, James Brahasar had also come and said, you know, Jupiter, yes. and, Jupiter and moon together are aspecting each other. They will go into some bhakti yoga and they always like a community uh, thing like, you know, as you say, sankirtan. And if moon and Saturn are involved, they like very silent, secluded meditation. You know, they like go, go somewhere. They don't talk for days. And, you know, they are like uh, trying to understand God like that. So astrology, in my experience, to culminate, to like uh, summarize, in my experience, I have seen uh, using astrology, you cannot exactly predict when exactly will you meet your guru. But yes. These are different parameters which you can use. You can check your original birth chart. Then you can check your Mahadasha, your Antardasha. And of course, if you find nothing else is matching, there are no combinations or no placements, then uh, you can always pray to God because we have the example of the great Dhruva Maharaj from the Srimad Bhagavatam. 
<laughs> where he was very inquisitive about finding God. He was a five-year-old boy who wanted to find God. And then finally, uh, Lord Vishnu had directed Narad Muni to go and uh, give him scriptural wisdom. And then Narad Muni came uh, to find uh, and he found Dhruva Maharaj and Narad Muni tested Dhruva Maharaj. Narad Muni said to him that, oh, my dear child, you know, you, you're just five years old, you know. <laughs> Spirituality is for the old people. It's not for, you know, five-year-old kids after all, right? <laughs> This is the time you should have fun, you should be with your relatives, you should be with your family members, with your friends, you should have the time of your life now, right? What are you doing in the forest? He, and then Dhruva Maharaj said, well, Mr. Narad, <laughs> Mr. Narad, if you cannot help me find God, then my respects to you, but please push off. I need to find God. It's an emergency for me. <laughs> um. And then Narad Muni said, yes, I was testing you. So he gave him the mantra, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. This is the mantra he gave him. And within no time, within a very short span of time, he saw Lord Vishnu and he obtained spiritual perfection, of course. So therefore, uh, people ask that, when will I find my guru? Uh, the answer is, uh, you cannot find your guru because guru is one who is bestowed by God. So that's the bad news that you can't find. But the good news is you don't need to. You just need to show your sincerity to God and then God will send the Guru. Send to so it is God's job uh, to find, to send the Guru to you. Uh, it's Of course, it's also our job to look and try to find somebody. But uh, when we are confused, then when we have sincere prayers from the bottom of our heart, then God reciprocates like he did in case of like uh, Devi Shabri from the Ramayana. You know, she also did not have a guru. And finally, Matang, she had accepted her, right? So many, we can have like countless examples. We yes. then the great, great Valmiki also. So when we do not see any hope using astrology, if we find that it's not happening, it's not working, then we just pray and then miracles happen. That, that will be all from my side. <laughs> Very beautiful. That was lovely. So, guys, wait for your guru or already having guru. Please follow them. Don't go against your gurus. That is the message that we have for you today. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.